world. This is great. <laughs> yes, hello world. This Hangout on Air is live. Welcome to Virtual Coffee with Jürgen Apello and Germany. We have guests from all over the country, including Marcus, Hans, Holger today, and uh, possibly a few more joining us as well. My name is Eleanor from Collaboration Superpowers, and I will turn it over to Jürgen. All right, thank you, Eleanor. So uh, yeah, this is the um, um, the fourth hangout or virtual coffee, I think. We have uh, uh, in preparation of the of the book tour, the Management Three Dollar Workout book tour, and this time I want to talk with a couple of people from uh, Germany, and uh, let's uh, introduce them uh, one by one. We'll give them uh, thirty seconds each. Uh, let's start with uh, Hans. Where are you from, and what are you doing? Well, hello. I'm Hans. I'm actually not from Germany, but from Austria, from Vienna. I'm an entrepreneur and management consultant. Uh, I have been working. Well, I have been working for a furniture production company as a manager, as an entrepreneur and owner for quite a time. And then I went to uh, various African country where I did sort of management consulting. They, they there they called it institution building, organizational setup. And last year I got involved with Management 3.0 and Jürgen Apelo. We had to, I had the pleasure to, to meet you last December. And I'm quite keen in getting to know you better and the Management 3.0 thing better. Okay. Well, thank you for the introduction. Uh, let's uh, move on to uh, the next one first. Holger? Yeah. Hi. I'm Holger. I'm uh, from Hamburg. And I try to be a, a three a manager 3.0 in uh, my company, that's Bigpoint, uh, a gaming company. We do um, browser games, free-to-play browser games. And yeah, I learned about management 3.0 um, two years ago, where I visited you in Amsterdam. You probably don't remember. Um, but uh, yeah, um, since then, we tried to introduce management 3 um, to our company, or at least to our um, department and doing trainings for all the um, employees in our department. So we did uh, three trainings uh, until now, um, training about 80 um, employees of our company. OK, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to talk about that more soon. Uh, but first, uh, Marcus. Hi, I'm Marcus. I'm working as an Agile coach at Linovate in Berlin. And what we basically do is we try to make the world a little better by creating learning companies. And this is a big credo that we have at Linovate. We are a consulting company doing, well, kind of an agile approach to everything <laughs> um, with software development as well as management consulting as well as methodology. So we're doing Scrum. We are licensed Kanban trainers, stuff like that. Um, and what we think is that companies that want to survive during the next couple of years, what they have to do is they have to <coughs> become learning organizations, not only learning people, but the whole organizations have to get, has to get a kind of DNA that is able to learn constantly. And well, this is a tough job sometimes, but it's fun overall. All right. OK, good. Sounds, uh, sounds very interesting. So um, uh, I'm sure we're going to touch upon a few of those uh, topics in the next uh, 40 or 45 minutes or so. Um, the first question that I have for you guys is uh, I have a couple of workshops planned in Germany, uh, München and Hamburg and uh, Berlin. And um, what was uh, the last one? Um, I don't remember off the top of my Frankfurt. head. Frankfurt. Frankfurt, of course. How can I forget Frankfurt? Uh, and um, my question to you was, uh, what to expect from from uh, the German attitude to uh, towards management? Uh, how do you feel that this might be different from what I expect as a foreigner uh, from elsewhere in 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 Europe? Uh, do you have an idea there? Does anyone want to start with that question? Yeah, I can start. Um, okay. Well, uh, okay. I thought a little about it. I, I, I don't think that Germany would differ from, from other countries. Um, maybe in the way that we are a little uh, further behind, uh, especially compared to, to the United States. I, um, I wondered if, um, 
with titles are maybe more important in, in Germany. So um, I'm looking forward to your uh, chapter about um, yeah titles in the new book. And um, when I look at the um, games industry in, in Germany, I uh, yeah, see that there is, seems to be an, an aversion to Agile somehow. I, I don't know where this comes from. Maybe there was some kind of big disaster with Agile in German games industry. But uh, there I can see many prejudice and, and aversion uh, if I even mention the, the word Agile. So I don't know where this comes from, but um, makes things more difficult than in other industries. All right. Okay. Well, that's that's very interesting. Um, so you you say a, a couple of things. First of all, you think that uh, uh, um, Germany might be a, a, a little bit behind as compared to the United States. Um, I would beg to differ, uh, perhaps on that uh, uh, on that topic, but uh, but I'll give you that one. Um, and uh, and you said that job titles are are important. Why are job titles important in in, in Germany? I don't know. Maybe it's something from from the past that uh, yeah um, people think um, there's a famous uh, novel and um, the Hauptmann von Köpenick, um, uh, <laughs> a German novel, and where someone yeah basically pretends he's he's someone else uh, wears a uniform and well everyone takes him as he would be someone important maybe that's that's a german thing to um, look at the titles and to think okay it's important to be uh, someone with a cool title um, it's important to wear uh, a uniform and uh, yeah to be somewhere in in a hierarchy um, on, on the upper levels, to, uh, yeah, to to feel more worth than, than yeah someone who's right. on the lower levels and has no okay. time. So status is is an important part of uh, of the work culture, uh, uh, seemingly. Uh, what do the other guys think about this particular topic? Well, um, if I might jump in, yeah. Um, from from my point of view, I think. I don't think Germany is that slow, especially in comparison to the States, because what I get from David Anderson, for instance, when talking about Kanban, is that he says, well, the Germans are quite good at adopting new methodologies and things like that. Um, they are, in the end, faster. But I think the big difference is that we are quite a hierarchical country. So people like to have some kind of hierarchy. And especially when it comes to traditional companies, this is somewhat challenging when becoming agile that all these kind of different roles and the different approach and the trust level uh, is really hard for people. It, it's a kind of a controlled country here to a degree. And so the trust thing is, I think, one of the biggest issues. Right. OK. Um, Hans, uh, do you yeah, agree with your point? Yeah, maybe saying something about Vienna more specifically. Uh, you will come to Vienna in September, I guess, I've heard. Uh, the status thing is, of course, very big here in Vienna because of the monarchy still. We, we love titles. We want to have titles. But those are important. Although I think the younger generation is maybe now a bit different. And, uh, well, from my point of view, I can't speak from IT. I'm, I think, the only one from outside the IT sector. Uh, I would uh, heavily disagree with what you said, that that the German-speaking world is behind the US in terms of of management, of modern management. Uh, when you think on this all these system-oriented management theories and Gallen model, you, you know, I think those models are quite ahead and quite on top of it. And actually, I think those models, those the, uh, this management thinking, fits quite well with your thinking, with the management 3.0 thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, okay. So um, I, I, I agree that uh, I, that's, that's why I said I'm, I'm, uh, I might not uh, um, agree with, with uh, uh, Germany being behind the US or uh, other parts of the world for that matter. It's, uh, things are implemented in different ways, I'm quite sure. And in some areas, uh, countries are lacking or lagging. In other areas, they are ahead of the curve. Um, Germany, I've never had the feeling that, that people were behind in one way or, or another. But I, I did notice, and people told me several times, 
um, not just in this in this uh, interview, that a particular struggle uh, in 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 Germany is indeed the the, the attachment uh, to to the hierarchy that is difficult to to let go. That is an an added uh, obstacle to uh, to overcome. Um, and the job titles are, of course, one uh, one typical uh, uh, typical uh, uh, part of uh, of that hierarchy. Um, any other uh, aspect of, of management that uh, foreigners will typically notice as soon as they uh, arrive in, uh, in, in Germany or German-speaking part of the world in, in Europe? Well, I think another typical thing about Germans and as well about German management is we try to be professional, which means a methodology is a methodology if there is a certificate more or less, um, or at least a very well uh, written book or something like that. And you, you have to have a title after all for mm. being a professional in whatever discipline it is. Um, and so the positive side of this is if they go for agile, they go for agile. And they want to do it good and professional and in every manner. And well, sometimes they suffer from that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I recognize that, but it's also the good part of Germany, I would say, because yeah. the Germans are famous for their high-quality products. I know, I know companies uh, in, in, on the other side of the world that intentionally have German-sounding names because they want to piggyback onto the, 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 the image that Germany has in terms of quality, and this is, of course, a, 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 the emergent outcome of, of this focus. On, on decent models, uh, good certificates, processes, etc. There's a downside to every uh, uh, to these uh, to this attitude, of course, because you can go too far, uh, being uh, dogmatic about your models and your certificates, etc. But uh, that's, I suppose, the one thing that Germans might uh, might be struggling with. Jürgen, we have a question from the audience. We have right. Martin. Yeah. Martin in Vancouver, Canada is right on point with what you're just discuss discussing. He says, the impression I have is that compared to Germany, people don't think and talk about process uh, as much. In Germany, people are aware of the process of how they do stuff, whether it's waterfall or agile. Here in Canada, I feel it's really hard to even talk about process. People just don't ha seem to have the concept in their heads. Hmm. Okay. Well, thanks. It's a very interesting contribution, and uh, I think I can uh, I can agree to uh, to that. So, um, okay. Let's um, let's move on to the to the next uh, question. Um, are there any success stories of of organizational transformation in Germany? Any examples of companies that that we could all learn from. Uh, uh, do you have uh, do you have suggestions there? Yeah, well, for sure there are a bunch yeah, of Marcus. there are for sure a bunch of companies that have done a really well agile transition, and well, it would be really really bad if they were known none because that's what we do professionally. So, mm -hmm. uh, and it I, is a big country, so you should have some companies doing well as well. <laughs> Absolutely. I I would, in, in my eyes, I think more or less, at least the whole uh, e-business industry is going the agile way to some degree. Some better, some not that far. And the fun part now is that even traditional businesses are recognizing that there is something called agile. And uh, what we do, for instance, we are, we are selling uh, Scrum Poker cards on Amazon. And what we recognize is uh, what companies are buying them. And these are no longer only the uh, software companies, but this is really through the whole industries. It's everything about every branch you can imagine. And uh, yeah. OK. And um, uh, what I find interesting is you said earlier that the, the games industry uh, that you are familiar with in, in Berlin, I suppose, is, has an anti-agile uh, attitude. Um, but on the other hand, uh, e-business is is quite agile. How how do you reconcile that? Are 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 people being agile but not daring to use the word agile? Is is that it, perhaps? Yeah, I think so. 
it's probably has something to do with a, well, a, some kind of community that meets in, in the different businesses. So maybe the community of developers that do games in, in Germany had some bad um, yeah, experience with Agile. Um, when I look at experienced managers in the games industry, I um, see that they use many Agile concepts and, and their knowledge shows that they know the, the methods uh, work but they try to avoid the, the word Agile and, uh, and Scrum because uh, yeah, somehow it's, it's burned. I don't really understand where this comes from, but I, I talked to many uh, people. I think there were some, some guys in the past um, that yeah, tried to, to do something and labeled it Agile, and uh, it didn't work, so somehow the, the word Agile is now m was misused and is now burned for. Us. Right. OK, OK. Well, uh, I'll, my apologies, Holger and Marcus. I mix you guys up, but that's, uh, uh, that's my mistake. Um, but um, uh, but uh, it's, uh, in the end, it doesn't matter what, what word people use as uh, uh, they could call it penguins as far as I'm concerned as long as they're doing the right thing. So the question is are they are are more people doing the right thing nowadays in Germany do you think? Uh, are, are they learning or um, is there still a long road ahead? Well uh, there is oh hold on. Marcus, no Marcus go yeah. ahead. I'll go back okay. to I, I think there, there is, we, we are in the second wave of Agile currently at the moment. Um, what we see is a lot of companies approaching us that have done some kind of Scrum or whatever Agile transition and they failed. And they failed heavily and I don't know what went wrong. It's, it's different, but in, in many, many cases they just did some key features or misunderstood some key features and now they are approaching us and we have to repair their broken Agile setups more or less um, and it works in general so what I see is people see no alternative to Agile they see the good side about the concepts and uh, so they don't give up and it's becoming more and more so I think yes there is a long way to go still and most companies are starting from pain so the most companies are starting from well our development department is too slow something like that and then they start going the scrum way and as you probably know scrum is a little bit like cancer so it, it, it goes through the whole company sooner or later and the tough part is when it comes to management so typically mm -hmm. there is a kind of, of line in between the middle management and the upper management and this is where the fun starts okay okay yeah um, maybe uh, I would like to, yeah, I would like to contribute something from outside IT. Okay, uh, please do. Not talking, it hasn't to be labeled agile, as you said, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the big success story of the German-speaking world are the so-called hidden champions. You might heard of those mid-sized companies. Uh, they say it's about 1,500 mid-sized companies, which are either top three on a certain world market niche, top three world market, the top one in Europe, on the European market. And, well, those are very specific, very highly specialized companies, like, for example, uh, they're producing potato harvesting machines, and they're really good in that, yeah, worldwide, number one. Or, or, or bakery machines, or, or uh, formwork constructions, or something like that. You have really a big number of those companies, and I think the success or, or, or the factors for their success has very much to do with management and has very much to do with what Steve Denning calls delighting the customer or Peter Drucker calls it customer value, to create customer value. And I think this is really the big success story in Central Europe. Maybe it's not only restricted to the German-speaking world, but to Central Europe in a way. And it's an alternative to the so-called shareholder value thinking. So, and it really starts with management, I guess. It has very much to do with doing the right thing, as you said. And again, Management 3.0, I think, fits very much into this. It's a further development of this management thinking and could very well link to, to many of those mid-sized companies. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, thank you so much.
Um, and um, uh, Holger, I believe you wanted to add something a few minutes ago. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, when I uh, the question is about organizational transformation, and um, well, you distinguish between um, organizational adoption in, in your Management 3 book, and I think there are many companies who, who start with uh, adopting something. Um, I know several um, companies in, in Hamburg, and they start with one or two development teams, and uh, I think there are many companies who have successes with uh, small development teams, or if you look into the teams, but it becomes more difficult when you when you get on the next level. So um, bigger structures like departments or whole companies, and um, I know uh, less companies who have successful um, bigger structures um, where they do um, scrum of scrums or things like that, and even less companies that well um, make the step um, to to move agile from one department to to the whole company. So that's that's a struggle we, we have in our company, but I know that several uh, companies in Hamburg have, have the same struggle. So, um, and when I think about organizational transformation, um, well, that actually is not what I think uh, is, is enough to, to say, okay, we really did the transformation and not only did the, the adoption. So, um, yeah, that's, that's one thing I think. Right. So. Okay, well, I'm 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 glad you point out that uh, that difference. I uh, uh, I agree that is maybe the cause of many many failed uh, uh, agile uh, um, uh, agile programs <clears throat> where people or companies simply adopt the practices without without really transforming as an organization. It's just adding stand-up meetings and backlogs to uh, to what is already in place is is not really going to make the company as a whole um, uh, agile. Uh, you need to do more than that. And in my opinion, it, it often boils down to management. Management is the glue between everything else. Uh, and if you don't, uh, don't touch that and merely uh, uh, change the, the, the software development approach to agile, you will uh, you will be left with uh, with an incomplete uh, uh, incomplete agile uh, agile transformation. So, um, what are uh, what are the other obstacles? That's the next question that I have on my list. Uh, we already uh, covered one or two. Uh, what are the main obstacles that you see in order to get um, a real transformation in in, in German uh, German companies? Are there some typical obstacles that you uh, encounter, uh, Marcus, for example, in your in your work? Uh, well, I don't know if they are typically German, but in general, you always have people that are in fear of losing something, power or whatever, and those people often enough turn out to be kind of obstacles, and in general, you have processes and compliance criteria that often enough are hindering Agile from, from growing, so that that is just at least slowing down and people are resisting change as soon as they fear that somebody could discover that they are not as perfect as they pretend to be. And this kind of being embarrassing and feeling good at it, this is something in the heads of people that you have to change. It's a different culture. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's an interesting topic. The, 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 the second one you mentioned, by the way, the, the, the the process and then compliance uh, issue. Um, uh, I had a, a talk with people in Belgium a, uh, one or two year, weeks ago uh, where something similar was mentioned where agile transformation was basically um, uh, blocked because of all the legal constraints uh, uh, around uh, unions and worker conditions, etc., etc., uh, that made it virtually impossible to to introduce agile in some uh, some environments because uh, it was it was being blocked by uh, by worker uh, 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 programs or, or whatever. So yeah, to, to give you an example, we have clients that have kind of um, well worker unions inside the companies, and if they are big enough, what we have to do if we are teaching classes in these companies, the workers' unions, the local part of them, they will have to review the class materials before we are allowed to teach the class, just to make sure that we won't teach the wrong things. Mm, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Then it, it must be union approved. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yes. <laughs> Okay, so uh, no chance of suggesting that we get rid of job titles then, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. No union will ever agree to that. Uh, okay. Um, we have a, a related question, Jürgen. Can I jump yeah, in ahead. and say um, Thorsten uh, talks about how companies start with Scrum or Kanban um, as a process and not as a new way of thinking, and Tomi says, Agile seen as a project process by top management, not in their focus. Do we need to use other terms for organizational development topics? Hmm. Okay, interesting question. Any of the gentlemen want to tackle that one? Yeah, maybe a, a slight approach. Um, you're absolutely right, but I think about it's used as a kind of project management tool scrum in, in the first hand. And when the cultural change comes, which will happen sooner or later, it is kind of a decision. If you go for the agile way and say, okay, I will let the culture change and I love it, or if you say, oh no, this is not what we wanted, we just wanted the project management abilities, and then you are stuck kind of with your agile implementation. Um, what what we try to do is we are talking to management on, on all levels, and many, many of them know that something has to change. They, well, you have to respect the kind of culture that comes traditionally with for top-level management, so they have to have their shareholders and their PowerPoint presentations, stuff like that, and they won't go out and say, well, probably we will have a velocity of 45 story points on average this year. This won't be enough for the shareholders. Um, <laughs> so, so you will have to deal with that and I think methods like Scrum are not enough and often enough they are leading even the wrong way so when when replenishment is needed more often you better go with Kanban or something like that so I, I would not make Agile a methodology, it's a cultural thing and it's something that needs time to develop so it, it, it doesn't matter which words you are using as long as you do the cultural change Right, yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it all starts with uh, with uh, changing the culture instead of changing the process. Uh, culture changes process, uh, or eats process for breakfast. Uh, uh, as, <laughs> yeah, as a slight modification on uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. But it's, <laughs> it's almost uh, the, the same thing. Um, uh, Holger, uh, the one thing that Marcus pointed out just earlier was uh, a fear of, of change. Now that is basically a theme that I see everywhere around the world. Um, is that something you have seen yourself as well, uh, that people fear uh, uh, trying something new? Yeah, um, I, I saw the same. It um, goes a little back to our discussion about hierarchical structures and titles. So, um, yeah, you have something um, with your title, and uh, then something new comes. We call it Agile. And um, the title you had, um, for instance, if you were a lead with a yeah, responsibility for, for people, and you now have to change to something like a product owner or a scrum master, and people fear to, to lose something. And yeah, we had uh, several problems uh, with that. And um, well, some can do the change and uh, see the, the opportunities and um, even like the, the new role and see that yeah, some things uh, work much better than before, but others see just the, the uh, loss of status and yeah, they can then leave or yeah, yep. I'm not very glad about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I, I recognize the 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 the, uh, the, the problem, the pain. Uh, Hans, your uh, your vision on that? Have you seen the same? Yeah, fear of change, of course, of course, it's yeah. a big thing. Mm -hmm. Many organizations, small or big, uh, you have to change the culture, as you said, yeah. But you you never can change the culture directly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One one uh, 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 starting point might be, or is it, or this is what we are talking about, I guess, is a new way of thinking. And new way of thinking has very much to do also with the purpose of what you're doing, the purpose of the company. And this, again, has very much to do with the meaning 
I think many people do not see, especially in the specialized companies, yeah, in the highly specialized companies, do not see meaning in what they're doing. Of course, right. they're only doing a very small part of the, of the whole value chain and so on. And, but, but the new way of thinking, as I understand it, has very much to do with delighting customer, purpose of the business, and 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 this is one of the the how do you say this, the starting points one of the Hebrew who of the other German speakers is here one of the uh, uh, leverage from there on you can leverage a, a, a changing culture I think. yeah 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 okay so um, I uh, I agree it, it it starts with the why. Uh, the, the, which is a question that, strangely enough, many companies cannot answer. What, what are we trying to achieve here as a business? And everyone in, in the company uh, should, should understand what ultimately the purpose of that, of that business is. Um, I must admit that I have uh, a, a, a very uh, small disagreement with, uh, with Steve Denning about the delight the customer uh, thing. Um, uh, it was uh, uh, announced just uh, today, by the way, that Google is now a more valuable brand in the world than Apple, uh, according to some uh, some ranking. And for me, Google is is <clears throat> the perfect example of of a company that is not delighting the customer. It is a company that has a grand purpose. Their purpose is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. Now, obviously, there are customers that they need, otherwise they would never make money. Right? But, but, but having customers, uh, finding customers and delighting them, that is, that is as important as having air for human beings to breathe. But the purpose is not finding customers for Google. The purpose is organizing the world's information and doing an amazing job at that. But, we're now getting to the philosophical, philosophical but this is an part interesting, of the management. It's <laughs> an interesting discussion, but because I think the purpose is resolving problems of customers. Well, personally, I don't think so. The purpose is to survive and thrive. That is the purpose of any system, any complex adaptive system. And you can only survive and thrive uh, if you have uh, a grand purpose that is working well for your stakeholders. And, and customers are, of course, a very, very important stakeholder, but not the only ones. We have seen with Apple that they delighted customers while screwing employees on the other side of the planet. And, and the media had to point it out for two years before Apple finally started admitting that something was wrong. Uh, so uh, it is more than just delighting customers. Um, but let's get back to the, um, um, uh, the, 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 um, the question that we had of uh, the obstacles. It was uh, change, um, um, uh, fear of change. That was the, that was the main uh, problem. Uh, any, is there any one particular thing that, that uh, stood, stood out to you in terms of the success that you had uh, in uh, getting people um, overcome a fear, to ch a fear of change? Uh, Hans, let's start with you. Have you, have you seen somebody finally uh, turning, uh, turning around and, and, and accepting change? Uh, well, this was what I mentioned before. Yes, uh, with this purpose thinking. Okay. I actually, yeah, from the systemic point of view, I, I, I very much agree. It, it's it's surviving. Yeah, any system wants to survive, or, or this could be a purpose. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, uh, in especially in overcoming fear, my, my experience is that really seeing again as an employee or as an as a, as a worker, uh, seeing again. Uh, what you do, the output of your system, what you do for your customer, delighting the customer or not, can give you very much of a purpose. Yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. very much more than just earning money or maximizing your share of the weight or whatever. Yeah? Exactly. Complete agreement uh, there. And, 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 and in, in, in this sense, I know there's this open discussion, is, 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 is the customer only one of the stakeholders or, or is it the stakeholder mm -hmm. purpose? I, I, I tend to or at least from my experience, especially from, from, from the, in these change processes, uh, 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 pointing out to, the, to, to what you do for, for the customer can give you a lot of purpose and can give you meaning. It can give your employees, the person who fears a meaning. 
and from that point of view, uh, uh, cultural change is possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So uh, we forgot to ask for your uh, for your coffee uh, mugs, by the way. Can you hold yours up, uh, Hans? Where's where's your coffee uh, well, mug? This is my coffee mug. Oh, that looks very nice. That looks very nice. I'm oh, actually right. directly from Joburg, Johannesburg, South Africa. Okay, cool. Okay, nice. And uh, Marcus, what's what's yours? Yeah, well, I've I'm drinking water, by the way, but I've prepared a coffee mug, which is <laughs> that one. Um, I, I don't know if you can can read what's written yeah. on it. Don't, don't guess, test it. Don't guess, test it. Yeah, don't guess it, test it. And and in case that you are drinking beer, I have prepared a second one, which would be this. This which would be this one. Stop starting, start finishing. Oh, I know that one. I know that one. <laughs> I've seen that before. <laughs> yeah, I, I think okay. this will fit this. We have a series of, of, of stickers that we use to give it to our customers. Our, our favorite at the moment is uh, is this one, which is German, which might, means crying doesn't help. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and this this is a good approach to to agile transition. Well, you can sit here and cry all day long, but it won't change a thing. So mm -hmm. stand up, change your mood, change your mind, do anything about it, and this okay. is a success story in the end as well. Well, wow. you only get one spot on the on the voting poll. I have started <laughs> <Okay>. the poll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Holger, uh, do you have a favorite coffee mug? Yeah, I have uh, this one with nice little fishes on it. Oh, nice. Yes, I see. And nice. also a very nice postcard. I love that line. I like uh, the swooshing sound they make as they fly by. Right, that is uh, Douglas Adams. <laughs> I know that quote. <laughs> yeah, I loved it, by the way. It's a great quote. So, um, all right, mo let's move on to the last questions because uh, it's uh, 37 minutes all, uh, already. So, um, I am I'm preparing for my workshop, as I, uh, as I told you, and uh, I've, I've been blogging about it along the way. Um, things are getting more and more clear, but I'm still hoping to hear some interesting suggestions. Uh, the, the, the old way of doing uh, courses is basically having people in, in rows uh, listening to an instructor in the, in the, in the front of, at the front of the room who then uses uh, uh, PowerPoint slides for eight hours long and uh, boring people to death with a monologue. Now, what would be the 21st century kind of way to doing a workshop for me? What would you give as a suggestion for me uh, for a facilitator who is trying to do things in a more modern, innovative way? Do you have some tips for me? That sounds like a rhetorical question. <laughs> well, I like the, the um, workshop parts of uh, the Management 3 um, training, so everything where uh, the people have to do something together, uh, play um, things, uh, that's great. And if we learn uh, something on the way, yeah. So remove the presentation part from uh, the training and let people do stuff. Okay, so let them play all, the, all day long, you say, all yes. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, sounds good. What about uh, Marcus? Have you seen any uh, good examples of, of modern 21st century kind of workshops? Yeah, well, I hope I do some of those. Um, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> What's, your secret? What's your secret, Marcus? Tell me. <laughs> I, I, well, I could tell it to you, but then I would have to kill you. Um, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> kill Eleanor. Kill Eleanor. But you put tell <laughs> okay. No, I, I think the, the thing is what Holger just said. It's about interaction. So you have to have a good mixture in between theory and practice, and practice in a workshop environment usually means some kind of gamification, uh, and this is something that sticks to people's mind. Mm -hmm. So what, what we do in our sessions, we are well, we are using Lego a lot for kind of playing simulations and stuff like that, and people absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, it's uh, it's often been suggested to me to use Lego, but I travel all around the world, and uh, the paper is heavy already. I cannot imagine me carrying Lego boxes <laughs> around, 
but uh, uh, there are alternatives that are very close uh, to, to Lego. Uh, so I, yeah. I completely agree. Um, uh, Hans, do you have any suggestions? Uh, uh, well, I'm, as I'm coming from outside IT, uh, I'm quite behind, I have to admit. I like the gamification thing, yeah, for what, what you guys, you IT guys do. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's great. It's, it's actually a, a, a really good input for us from outside the IT, traditional sort of system-oriented management uh, uh, consultant. Uh, but I, I still would say some theoretical input lectures, although maybe in small doses are not so bad, yeah? I do like them personally. You like you like small small uh, lectures. So, well, I, I, I personally like lectures. You so like lectures. Okay, I'm one of the few. Yeah. Well, to um, be honest, I I like every now and then I like just sitting down and listening for a while without yeah. without having without being forced to communicate and collaborate all the time. That is, but that may be the introvert in me uh, who uh, who likes that every now and then. So uh, I can I can understand. There, it's uh, it's nice to just sit and listen. Um, okay. So uh, my last question to you guys: um, What 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 local media or people should I be reaching out to? Um, I will be in Germany in in June. Uh, the last week of June is Germany Week for me. And uh, is there anyone that you feel that I should be contacting? Any any website, magazine? Uh, a uh, news station, whatever, <laughs> who would be interested in in, uh, uh, in, in in telling their people more about it? First German television. I'm oh, sorry, Holger? You should contact First German television and be on the, the 20 o'clock uh, Tagesschau. <laughs> Tagesschau! <laughs> I think I need to be a little bit more famous for that. <laughs> oh. I thought you were, you were now on the 40th uh, place uh, of um, international manager. That, that, is, that is correct, that is correct, but uh, I doubt that Tagesschau has, uh, has presented the other 39 above me, so... <laughs> No, oh, but top 40 in the world would be a good topic for, for any Dagest show, especially for local TV. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's the thing I'm looking for, so uh, if you can help me, uh, help me promote things locally, then I'm all, I'm all for it. Uh, so uh, if you have any suggestions, uh, feel free to, uh, to let, us, uh, let us know uh, afterwards, of course, is also, is also possible. Um, 45 minutes almost. I want to wrap up. Uh, let's uh, let's give a, a, a an overview of the coffee mugs again, so because people need to vote for their favorite coffee mug. Let's see. That is the fishes is a Holger's, and uh, the one from Johannesburg is from Hans, and we have the the two quilts by uh, from Marcus. All right. Oh, by the way, this is mine. You cannot vote for mine, but this is uh -huh. the one that I use now. Yeah. And mine's just pure red. No, and pure red for Eleanor. All right. <laughs> so. Um, it looks like Hans is the winner of Hans the, the winner. Oh, right. contest. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. So he'll Ready? get a copy of How to Change the World. Uh, Viva okay. everything. Yeah. <laughs> I think you already have that book. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to send you another one. <laughs> oh, that's great! But I do have friends. I would like them. You, exactly. You can just give it away. <laughs> Jürgen, may I run through the dates and cities of your workshops in yes, Germany, please? please? please All do. right. You will be in Munich on June 23rd. And that one right. is confirmed. Yeah. Twenty-four people. Confirmed for Munich. You will be in Frankfurt on June 25th. Mm -hmm. uh, they're building momentum. You will be in Be Berlin on June 27th. That workshop is confirmed. And Hamburg on June 30th. That one needs some some people. I also want to mention that there's a Stoes conference in excuse me an unconference this Saturday in Hamburg and you will be making the opening remarks at 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. That is correct. Looking forward to that. 
All right. So thank you, Eleanor. Um, uh, a last round uh, for the gentlemen we have in the call. Some last comment or question. Uh, let's start with uh, Hans. Uh, do you have anything, anything left uh, that on your mind that you want to share with us? Maybe let me just repeat that I, I like this management 3.0 approach, and I think it fits very well to to system-oriented thinking and system-oriented management, which I had known and learned the years before. And it's actually an advancement, a development, a further development, uh, and, and I liked it. Yeah. All right, good. So I'm happy to be part of the community. Thank you. <laughs> and it's glad to have you join that uh, community, uh, Hans. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Holger, some last uh, wise words from you from Thanks. Hamburg? invitation and uh, it was nice to meet you here in this hangout and to those people in Hamburg um, please come to the uh, workout so that we are enough people that it can happen indeed all right thank you so much for pointing that out and uh, last one Marcus yeah well I'm really tense on your workshop on 27th it, it, it will be with us basically so you just saw the office you will be holding your class in in the end and we, we can still afford some more people I think it's 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 well it will happen but some more wouldn't be bad and regarding the um, agile way I think leadership is a good way to go and the one thing that really is helpful for success you have to prove that it works in a small environment mm. okay well those I, I, I cannot add anything to such beautiful words uh, Mark. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you in uh, in Berlin uh, next uh, at the end of next month. And uh, I'm handing it over to uh, to Eleanor to uh, wrap things up. Okay, thank you. We had uh, another contest before our viewers joined us, and that was the contest for giving away a bag of real coffee at our virtual coffee. So I just want to publicly congratulate Holger for being the first one set up to our webinar and uh, to our Google Hangout today and receiving a bag of real coffee. We reward so, time with us. We, we have, and I want to thank all the viewers who uh, contributed. We had a number of comments and a number of conversations among them as you all were speaking. So those we will collect and pass on to you for blogging, Jürgen. All right. So, Thanks, Thanks to everyone. We're going to click off the air now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.